As a committed environmentalist for more than 30 years, Ed has always tried to, quote, live simply so others may simply live. Ed and his wife, Rachel Carson, host Sunday evenings the critically acclaimed HGTV series, Living with Ed. He is also the author of a book on sustainable living entitled Living Like Ed. It's packed with ideas from the obvious to the ingenious, and that will help you live green, live responsibly, and live well, just like Ed. It's my pleasure to introduce to you folks Mr. Ed Begley, Jr. Welcome to Portland. Another big hand for our wonderful mayor of this great city of Portland. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. For those of you who don't know, I come up here a lot. My son Nicholas lives here with my daughter-in-law Kyle and my grandson Ellison, so I love this town and I know what you're doing for the environment with your great public transportation system, with all the other wonderful groups that are here. Uh, my friend Joe Leach uh, from Eco Village and uh, just wonderful stuff going on in that city. Lots of bike lanes and bike traffic. Anybody like to ride a bike here? Thank you. It's a great city for public transportation, for bikes, for the environment. It's a very green city. But uh, I'm here to talk about a few things. Uh, I was asked to come here and speak at this wonderful conference. And I, I want to thank a few people first. Uh, first of all, uh, the folks at Energy Trust for what they're doing there. Go over to that home there at Energy Trust. A big hand for them. They're doing terrific things. Saving energy, helping us all to save energy and to do it on a budget, to do it right, to do it financially, uh, in a financially sound manner. Uh, also, Northwest Natural, before there were hybrid cars, I used to drive across country and I'd drive up here to see my son when he was going to read in a natural gas car. And uh, natural gas has no foreign oil in it and it's another tool in the toolbox to clean up the air in many cities, Portland among them. So uh, a big hand for the people at Northwest Natural. Because they did a wise thing years ago. They did what's called decoupling. If you don't know what that is, they decouple the idea of making profits by selling you more energy. They get a set amount every year, a return on their investment, and then they're in the, in the business of saving energy for people. And they have a new program with offsets to, uh, so you can buy offsets and uh, something you might want to check out that you can buy from Northwest Natural uh, carbon offsets for the, uh, the, the energy that you're using. Uh, now that I've thanked everybody, and I meant every word of it, uh, we need to talk about a few things that you might have noticed in the news. You might have seen it in a newspaper. You might have seen it on a TV show. You might have read about it online. Perhaps if you're a spelunker, perhaps if you've been in a cave for a few years, you've missed some of these things, so maybe I'm just going to refresh your memory. But we... Can you hear me back there? Troglodytes. Exactly, troglodytes, cave dwellers, exactly. So uh, for the troglodytes out there, I'll, I'll remind you some of the challenges we face. Uh, we do have some, some challenges, and the challenges are things that you can find out. If I was making this stuff up, you could easily research it on the internet and find out. I urge everybody to check out everything I say tonight from this microphone online. That's one of the great things about this day and age. You can check things out online, and I would urge you to stick with peer-reviewed studies, uh, scientific papers, people with PhD after the name, uh, reputable things, people you trust. Maybe I would hope you would trust uh, Noah, uh, I would hope you would trust uh, National Geographic. I would hope you trust uh, people like the Union of Concerned Scientists, which has more than half the living Nobel laureates. And uh, they will certainly verify a lot of the things I'm talking about. But uh, just stick with peer-reviewed studies, Science Magazine, Nature Magazine, National Geographic, people that have a good reputation for scientific thought, Nobel Prize winning people. That's a pretty safe bet. I'll roll the dice on that. Uh, in uh, verifying the things I'm about to tell you, but most of you know this stuff. Let's just remind ourselves of so, some of the challenges we face. There's a lot of people that feel we have trouble in the future with global climate change, and I'll talk about that a little bit. Let's talk about the stuff that's happening right now. You don't need to worry, to, to worry about, is it gonna happen? It's already happened. 
We certainly have trouble with the air quality in cities like Beijing, Mexico City, Shanghai, Hong Kong, but we also have trouble, I'm sure you've heard, if you've ever been to Los Angeles, where I live, there's problems with the air in Los Angeles, in Houston and Bakersfield, problems with air quality, real problems with kids getting sick, kids with asthma, elderly people, premature deaths, lots of problems with air quality. Nitrogen oxide, sulfur dioxide, PM2.5, ozone, things that are very damaging to the lung, lungs. It's a real problem. You don't have to worry, is that gonna, ha is that gonna happen? It's happening now. We also have a problem with ozone depletion from CFCs. That was a, a big problem we learned many years ago with uh, ozone depleting chemicals damaging the ozone. And so we had more increased UVB, more skin cancer rates. That's a real problem that we have that is measurable, quantifiable. We have a problem with water pollution. We have a problem with all these wonderful chemicals we've all benefited from. Trichloroethylene, it's a degreaser per chloroethylene. Use it as a, uh, you know, it's a dry cleaning fluid. We all, many of us go to the dry cleaners. Some of us don't. God bless you for not going to the dry cleaners. <laughs> and, uh, but a lot of us do, and so you get that per chloroethylene on your legs when you put it on your legs. You breathe it when you go in the shop, and uh, it's something that contacts your skin. It's, it's a bad thing. It, get, it also gets in the groundwater. So does perchlorate, which is a, a rocket fuel. Uh, many other chemicals, PCBs, uh, you know, the list is very long of all the, uh, the, the ubiquitous chemicals that have wound up not only in our groundwater, but in marine mammals like the beluga whale have elevated levels of PCBs and other things, polychlorinated biphenyls. Lots of these chemicals that are out there many of them polluting our groundwater. So we have trouble with our air, we have trouble with our water. We certainly, uh, anybody else a scuba diver here? Anybody like to dive? You've been in the ocean, you've seen, uh, even if you don't dive, you've seen some uh, you know, footage of uh, diving. You've heard about some of the challenges, I'm sure, with our coral reefs being depleted. Our coral reefs are dying at an alarming rate, being bleached and dying at an accelerated rate. And that's not just dangerous because it makes them less pretty. That is the nursery, that is the incubator for many species of marine life. We need those coral reefs as part of the web of life. We have a problem with a lot of fisheries, uh, many species of fish that were, you know, uh, very high, very safe and high stocks of fish over the years have now been depleted great, greatly. We've been so good at fishing, we've gotten really successful at it, that we've overfished and have a, a problem. There's other problems with power plants and silting of uh, rivers and what have you of the spawning grounds and that have depleted. There's many reasons many species of fish have been depleted. And the cod and the haddock and flounder in the Grand Banks, Grand Banks and Georgia's Bank, Banks fisheries has been greatly depleted, so much so they had to stop all ground fish in that area there in the northeast for quite a while. So we have problems in our oceans. 